Okay, sounds good on the fire off, running. Let me go ahead and start our scanning here quick. Let's see what's happening to the torque calculations. They should have been reduced. So we'll let it run here for a little bit. Um, it has to settle out into its idle. The torque is obviously showing that it's high here, but as it settles out and as it starts to idle and calm down a little bit, that torque should be a little bit more accurate. And we should find it's about 20, 30 pound-feet of torque. Again, as I let it run here, we'll find out what's going on with that. Let's just jump down here towards the bottom. We can see here the, the volumetric efficiency airflow showing about 10. The mass air here flow is showing about 10. They're pretty close, that looks good. The throttle position is showing about 11% right now, so the actual throttle plate movement. And the spark timing here is positive, it's about 15, 20 degrees. That all looks good. That's exactly what we wanna see. I don't wanna see the throttle opening a whole lot and then negative spark timing, that's, that's not ideal. Now I have a nice chop out of the cam and I haven't done anything yet. I simply just went in and done a couple changes. It has a nice chop. Now the cam itself has a profile that it will chop. Notice here as we're letting it run, the torque is starting to drop. Now it's about 40, 35, so it's reducing. We might need to jump in and reduce that again. Now, let me go ahead and do that one more time. I'm gonna bring it down in torque. I'd like to be a little bit lower than that. I'm gonna bring it down in another 20, 30% and we'll see the effect of that. If we're getting 20, 30 pound-feet of torque, that's gonna to be about ideal. Um, looking at this one thing I want to mention here let me just shut it off so we can make those changes those update changes one thing I want to mention is if you're going after a chop with a cam you might have to go in and edit some of your idle control values if we jump into our calibration file here real quick we take a look at the idle parameters we're taking a look here in our adaptive idle control we have immediate and predicted predicted is going to be related to our throttle body moving the immediate is going to be our spark timing feedback if you want to have more of a chop out of your cam you can go in here and say that you want more or less torque movement or authority from the spark timing in order to get that chop out of it. So you can be more aggressive with how you set this up. Now this cam chops pretty well. I don't necessarily need to do anything with this yet, but I could go in and edit this to get a little bit more chop. Let's just go make that torque change real quick and then we might go and revisit this. The other thing to keep in mind is if your throttle plate's moving around a little too much, you could go in here, this takes a look at the RPM error, looks at the target, looks at the actual RPM, sees how far you're off by. This is what it references in terms of language of torque. It knows if we need to reduce or increase torque, this is how much throttle plate movement it's going to need to move the throttle plate by in order to have that level of torque output change. In this case, you don't want your throttle moving around a lot with a big cam installed. You want your spark timing to handle the majority of the reactive or fast switching type of behavior for the torque output so the engine idles pretty stable and it's much more reactive if you have your throttle moving at the same time your spark timing is moving that can create oscillation in the idle and instability so you may need to on a big cam here zero out 20 plus or minus 25 in rpm error and let uh, the actual spark timing take control and have that a little bit more aggressive but i don't want to do that yet we'll just we might experiment with that just a little bit Let's jump in here, let's go back into the virtual torque tables and we know right where we're at here. So I'm gonna to go to the air mass. We were right about here in that air mass values. I'm gonna bring them down by another, let's say 30%, type 0.7, multiply, extrapolate, and then we'll go to the map and we'll go here. We were roughly at 70 kPa, so I'll edit right here. Same thing, we'll just edit our values and we'll do extrapolate. Now notice it changes the entire column here. So that's why I wasn't doing any blending. I was just doing some, some basic changes. I could probably also just extend this out and interpolate this to the 950 column. If I do the horizontal interpolation, calculate coefficients, go back to the air mass, we could probably do the same thing here, just extrapolate it over a little bit, just change this up a little bit more, just because that's going to be still idle conditions. We're, we're going to be uh, moving up beyond that as we get on the throttle just a little bit, or if we're at a higher idle speed when the engine's cold, we still wanna go and reduce some of that estimated torque coming from our virtual torque. So let's do a file save as, let's jump back in here, make sure we're disconnected. Let's disconnect ourselves here real quick. Let's jump in here and let's go ahead and flash it. Looks like the vehicle is on. Let me key cycle it here real quick. Okay, and let's go ahead and flash. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.